Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Wade Acuff and I'm gonna be your host today for day two with wildlife filmmaker and photographer, Christy Odom. Christy, how's it going? What's so up? So good, things are good. How are things with you, Wade? <laughs> uh, doing well, excited for what you have planned for us today. Um, but before we get to that, um, I do wanna say hi to chat. What's up everybody, how's it going? Um, and in case you missed it, um, there was a Lightroom boot camp right before this stream uh, with Aaron Nace. It's happening all week, Monday through Thursday, 11.30 a.m. Pacific time, uh, right before this stream. Uh, you can tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt every day. Uh, and also, we're going to have an artist spotlight later on in the chat, uh, sorry, in the stream. Uh, and uh, I think, who is modding? Cody might be, be able to put that into um, the chat for us later on. But Christy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what we're maybe uh, getting up to for day two? Sounds great. Well, thank you all for being here and thank you, Wade, for hosting me. This is going to be fun today. I am, my name is Christy Odom. I'm a wildlife photographer and filmmaker based in Longmont, Colorado. My goal is to connect people emotionally to wildlife and to celebrate animals' emotions and personalities. I'm a visual artist and I'm a Nikon ambassador, part of the International League of Conservation Photography. And I'm really excited to um, share some more video editing today. Yesterday we did uh, some short form stuff, things that you can use for your social media, things that you can use for your website and how there's a big merging of photography and video and being able to add those moving stills, not necessarily like full films or anything like that can really add to what you're offering your clients. It can add to your own visuals and make your website more dynamic and engaging. And also, you know, make your Instagram and your socials more engaging as well. Um, but today we're going deeper. So I, I'm excited about today because, you know, uh, you know, I was really excited with that piece that I was talking about yesterday where Nikon saw some of my slow motion video on my Instagram and then it ended up getting me to put together a video for them. But it had always been a dream of mine to do a campaign and do one where I got to go out and create a shoot and, and go out and actually like produce uh, a piece from start to finish. And I remember when I got the call to do the Z9 campaign, I was so excited. It was really funny because like I literally just started crying. <laughs> it was like I was out rock climbing with my stepson and I got this phone call and it was like, do you want to um, do a video campaign with our new flagship mirrorless that's coming out, our Z9? And I'm like, yes, yes. And it was so funny though, because I was just bawling and <laughs> and um, my stepson looks at me and it was, it was such a confidential call that I couldn't tell anyone anything oh. about this camera. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I promise these are happy tears, but I can't tell you anything. That's a and great so, story. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. And I'm, you know, it was really cool too, because um, I was nervous. I had never touched this camera until the shoot or anything like that. And so getting the camera, shooting for my first time, 120 frames per second at 4K. And then also like not knowing how the software would support a new camera that hasn't been announced. It was a pre-production model that I did all this work on that we're going to work through today. And I was just so blown away with how easy it was with Premiere Pro and Seamless. And, you know, obviously I couldn't even talk to Adobe about what I was doing. So it was like one of those situations where I'm like, let's hope that the editing is not crazy. But I'm really excited. I'm going to share the files. I'm going to share that whole thought process and talk about how I put together a slow motion video campaign. So we're going we're going bigger today. <laughs> awesome, amazing. So, uh, so that story does really set it up. It's a really nice backdrop to what we're about to see. I love it. <laughs> it was so fun too. It was funny too because it was like, all right, you're gonna have five days. We ended up having a couple of extra days, but you're gonna have five days with a camera you've never touched, and you have to get like 
stellar wildlife. And I'm like, is a wildlife photographer? You, <laughs> it, wildlife doesn't always, it's not always there. It doesn't always like, it's not waiting for us to go out and photograph it. <laughs> Like, you know, in a lot yeah. of ways. So and, it was. And, with, um, <laughs> and that with new gear. Uh, yeah, that's got to be. So were you nervous going into it or were you more like excited, nervous? We're going to make it happen no matter what. Did you ask for all the tech manuals? What What was the. There wasn't even a manual out for the camera yet. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I was. Um, yeah, to say like when you get that call and you get the, you know, one of the biggest opportunities of your career. And then it's like, but it's going to have all these unknown elements. I was not sleeping. I was a bag of stress. My poor husband, like I was anxious and excited and all of the above, but I just had like this energy for days. And then after I finished the piece, it didn't get released for a little while. And I'm like, I want to be able to share it with everyone. So it was, and I'm excited too, because I th a lot of what I was doing for this piece was just visual eye candy. So it was a, a lot of um, filming animals and putting a piece together yeah. that just really celebrated wildlife. Well, and when, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to jump into it. Let's, <laughs> let's get, let's get into get it and see started. what's started. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I first wanted to start with a little segue just because I'm excited mm -hmm. about this segue. I, um, as a, a photographer that's moved into video, I will admit my main program for photography is Lightroom. And before our stream today, I, I, I did this up, update for for my lightroom and i noticed that there's like oh, yeah. a new lightroom a feature today. <laughs> it was like what so i mean this is definitely going to be part of my workflow and for all of you out there that are you know taking stills and used to editing in lightroom like i think that this will be a massive update that you can use so i wanted to start by just sharing that so lightroom now edits videos yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like yes. what so i pulled just four video clips in here and this is from the campaign and you can see the videos here and i can go in and i talked a little bit yesterday about the familiarity of the sliders now i've got my lightroom sliders <laughs> <laughs> and i can change my exposure i can change my highlights i can i can edit these videos and you know change all of my color and this is the stuff that i'm used to using and, you know, I can play through the videos and, and just see how, you know, those are all slow motion, so it's going to take a long time. But it's just, it's so cool. So I was really excited about this new feature, and I was really excited about even, like, just the shadow recovery and all sorts of things. Because Colorado doesn't have as many clouds as I thought it did. So we were shooting with, like, no clouds in the middle of the day quite a bit. But... I think that this update is a game changer and it's something that I wanted to mention. I'm not going to go deep into it because I haven't used it for my own workflow yet, but you better believe like next time if I'm for Adobe, I'm going to be oh, yeah. talking about video editing and adjustments in Lightroom because this is like such an amazing tool and you know, I can put my vignettes on right here and all that stuff and you know, it's really Sometimes too, like Adobe Premiere Pro has so many features that it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, um, you know, if they're they're looking to get into video editing and Adobe Premiere Pro is not their tool, Adobe Rush is an amazing tool. But I haven't loved it because you can't adjust the colors and the sliders as much. So I can edit in Lightroom, export and then do my final cuts and everything and in, in adobe rush which might be a better workflow for some of you have you used adobe rush Wade? i have a couple of times uh i really do enjoy it for like how simple it is it's super easy to get into and you can make things very quickly uh, but i totally get what you're saying about if you're you know a photographer and you're used to using lightroom and you want to you know color grade your video in lightroom and you don't have to do that in another program I mean, it, it's a nice little step that you can do before getting to the part you may not be so familiar with. Exactly. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. And if you want to learn more about um, the update, I highly recommend going to the, the, you know, this was updated literally yesterday. So go to the Lightroom and it's got all of the updates for you know, this video editing in Lightroom. Something yeah, I believe, great to uh, check Cody out. Cody Bear has put a uh, link in chat for the what's new <laughs> features in Lightroom. Thanks, Cody. I appreciate it. 
Wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to open up Premiere. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the approach and setting up this shoot because there was a lot that went into making sure, I mean, Nikon was coming out and they were going to watch. They set up a device and they could see through my camera. They could see all my settings. They could see everything going on. And with all of that and how nervous I was, I needed to make sure that one, the whole team respected wildlife. Two, we knew where the wildlife was. We had to get a ton of permits. Like the permit system was one of the hardest parts of the shoot, to be honest, because I was working commercially um, and professionally. If you're working commercially at all in any national park or things like that, like you have to go through the proper permit system. Um, so the first thing that we did was I actually hired a wildlife biologist that worked in Rocky Mountain. She was with Rocky Mountain Wild. Her name was, is Megan Mueller and she's just such a gift. And she ended up helping us come up with a game plan of where the wildlife was. And she had all these charts and it was, it was beautiful. And we actually had the most amazing opportunities because of hiring a, a local biologist. And it's really easy to find conservation organizations that are based around you if you are doing a shoot that's a little bit bigger and or any shoot for that matter. And you learn a lot about the animals, the behavior. You also give back to conservation. And, you know, one of her well, a couple of things that she did, she kept a iPad on her and she like told us when we were in legal you know, areas and like, don't cross that line. We can't shoot over there. Oh, wow. And it was it was very particular in, in uh, Rocky Mountain National Park where we could and couldn't um, film. And she also made sure that we stayed our proper distance from animals and we had, uh, you know, no footprint. So I think that that is a really important thing. Um, the planning and, you know, just going online and finding conservation groups and different people that you might be able to work with or things like that. Um, uh, sorry, if you don't mind, wait, I wouldn't mind talking a little bit about the thought process just first. Oh, is absolutely. that okay? Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. And we're going to dig this into is, this a is lot of show. premieres. I'm just here to, to help. <laughs> Um, so one of the things, and you know, I mentioned this yesterday, how I like to watch movies and then reverse storyboard them and draw out all my pictures. So I, I, I had this idea of what I wanted to shoot before I went out. Like I wanted scene setter shots. I wanted detail shots that I could incorporate sound with like water moving, leaves rustling. Like I love the sound of aspen leaves in the fall. Like it's one of my favorite sounds. So I wanted shots that I could bring those sounds in with. I wanted the establishing shots that showed, you know, the park. I wanted to, you know, I was shooting everything for the campaign myself alone. We had a BTS crew doing a behind the scenes video for Nikon. And we obviously had, you know, a five person crew. It was really nice. Um, but I was really into, you know, every time I saw something, I wanted a different angle or a different focal length. So I had something to cut from. So I was constantly thinking of, you know, if there was a certain behavior from an animal, like an elk bugling, and I got it from one angle, like, could I move to a different angle and get a different angle? Or can I get something a little bit um, with a different focal length so I can cut back and forth? So those were things that I knew I was looking for. But with wildlife, a lot of it is being open, having your different, you know, different uh, lenses. Or if you have a second shooter that can get a second angle, that's gold. Um, but those were the things that I knew I was, you know, preparing for and looking for when I went out to the national parks. And then I have to mention this too, because it's super important. When I got home and I had shot over a terabyte of footage, <laughs> I had to prepare my computer to handle the files and, and prepare my computer to actually be able to like, um, edit. And there's a couple of things that I want to point out. It's really important to do. I personally like editing on my internal drive. I find it to be faster. I mean, yeah, there's some external drives that you can get all sorts of, you know, Thunderbolt three connectors to, I think four now, and you can get all sorts of really fast externals. Um, but for me, like I, if I don't have, I, I like to put everything on my computer. So I pretty much clean off my computer. I'll get an extra drive and I'll pull everything from my desktop to that drive and then I'll have a clean computer <laughs> so that I have the fastest workspace and everything is just getting called internally, which is how I work. Wait, do you do that same so, thing? Well, I was going to ask, do you do that for every single project you do? Because there's the no way ones. I could do that. There's the no way. The big ones for sure. So whenever I'm doing a big video piece, yeah, yeah. I like. 
I pull it's just amazing. about everything off my desktop, and then I, I, I work there, and I find that that helps tremendously. I mean, heck, you, I've got all these hard drives that are like computer backup from this date, and mm -hmm. so if I ever need a file, I just plug in that hard drive, and I've got my backup from that date. So. Now, I, I definitely you make backups, but there's no way. I, I jump back <laughs> and forth, and there's edits and people wanting things, so I can't like you know constantly yeah. be moving it. That's amazing. I would love to do that, actually. Boy, it's helped me out so much. Um, but yeah, and make sure you're not running extra programs in the background, things mm -hmm. like that. Like these are pretty, you know, big files. Well, on that note, do you have like, you know, your main program and then like 37 tabs open in a browser <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> exactly. You close everything out. You're, you're, I you're close not... everything out. Like, nice. I mean, it looks pretty much like it does right now. I've got my Zoom, my internet browser, and, and Premiere open, and that's it. So keeping it super simple. Um, but yeah, so that's those are the important things. And now we're gonna get um, you know started with what happens when the files go on my computer because I've got so many clips where you know maybe the animal never gave me their eyes, maybe there was something that didn't quite work. I've got a lot of, and with video, I find you're just constantly cutting things down, cutting things down, cutting things down. Mm -hmm. So my very first step is I literally load all my videos onto my desktop and I view each of the, the videos. I just let them play in Finder. And every one that I like, I put into a favorite folder. And any one that I think I'm gonna use, I put into a favorite folder. And then I rename things in my favorite folder by numbers that sequence and, and push things together in a way. So if you look over here, I've already pulled my media in here. But I've got like, um, you know, my threes are um, from day three of shooting. Uh, a lot of times I'll kind of link things together by animals, but this one I linked it by my days. Day four, these bellies were four belly, was the yellow belly marmots. Um, day five is a lot of my like, um, you know, feeling shots, my scene setter shots. So now I've kind of got everything lumped together, which makes it easier for me to do my editing. Um, because I'm now thinking the first step that I do in Premiere is I want to put things together as a sequence. I hope I'm not boring you guys. I haven't started editing no, yet. No, I just is, had a lot of talking. I mean, we're here to learn your process <laughs> and this is your process. So keep it going. <laughs> it's really funny because I find that a lot of people are actually really curious about workflow. And I know Absolutely. that there's all sorts of different workflows that you can do. And, and I will say for this project and for today, I have created a whole bunch of proxies. Um, which is something that I'm not going to go through how to do it. But if you're curious about like if your machines may be a little bit too slow to handle your video files or anything like that, proxies make a smaller file of your videos. And so you can see things and how they play a little bit better in Premiere if there's that lag. I develop proxies just because of zoom and I want to make sure things mm -hmm. look good for you guys and I can toggle those on and off. But it's important to know that if you are working with proxies to um, do all your color correction and stuff like that with your top with your proxies turned off, you know, so things like that. But I'm not going to get into that because that's really technical and that's not something that I use too much. But if you are noticing that your machine's having some struggles, it's something that's definitely worth doing. Like Premiere Pro goes into um, Media Encoder and makes these small compressed files of each of your videos. And you can edit those small compressed files. And then when you export it, it connects it back to the, the main file. Am I explaining that right, Wade? Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, exactly. It's very useful. I've used them multiple times uh, because my, my machine is not as robust as it should be. Uh, but I still want to edit, so it's a good way to uh, <laughs> to make sure you get the most out of it. No worries. All right, so now we've got, um, I've already imported all of my video files here. And I showed how to do that yesterday. You just kind of double click and import them all. Um, but now I'm going to go in and I, well, first off, I want to go to, uh, yeah, my all panel workspace. I like this workspace. Okay. And now I'm going to make a sequence. So I'm going to go to File, New, Sequence. And this was a 4K project and I shot everything in 4K. So I am going to go to those 4K settings, which is 3840, uh, 3840 by 1920. Oh, no, by 2160, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. 
I write all these numbers down because I get numbers wrong all the time. Um, I'm keeping everything the same. I want that 29.97 as my final output. I'm going to do Rec 709. I would have normally done this one for this Nikon project, the 2100, but I'm doing this for the sake of the stream today. Um, and that 2100 will give you a little more depth to your color and dr drama to your color. Drama? drama Dramatic yeah. colors? Dramatic colors? Yeah. <laughs> Like Does that drama. make sense? <laughs> um, so yeah, and I usually keep these checked, but I'm not going to check them today. And I'm going to call this sequence um, Adobe. Um, so you were talking about picking your likes, you know, like which ones you like your, your, um, mm -hmm. now I know Adobe, Room, uh, Adobe, uh, Lightroom has, uh, you know, some of those features. Does, is that anything? You, Cause the question was, why don't you use bridge for sorting or do you use bridge for sorting and marking uh, favorites? But I was thinking Lightroom also does that. It, it can make selects for you. I wonder if there is a way with video to do the same thing. That's a great uh, idea. And you know, maybe I should do more of that. I find that importing the terabyte versus footage into Lightroom, um, it's just an extra step. Oh, okay. Okay. But I'm not doing any sort of alteration to the footage, but bridge, you know, actually those are great suggestions. Maybe I should. And any of those suggestions, like I, for the most part, like I took a, a filmmakers course from the BAMP filmmaking group. It was a month long. Um, but other than that, a lot of what I've done has been self-taught. So mm -hmm. I am open for, <laughs> wait, if you, yeah. if you no. see anything where you're like, there's more of an efficient way, like I right. am all ears for always learning. <laughs> so. Well, and you know, and, and chat's a great resource for that too. So if I see anything, I will definitely share it. <laughs> yep, that would be great. Cause yeah, I, I find that I use the tools that I use. I remember there's so many fun tools that, like when I learned about speed ramping, which I'm not gonna get into today, mm. unfortunately, but I was just like, whoa, speed ramping is where you slow down and speed up footage so you can like stop at certain points yeah. and have like certain parts go into slow-mo and it's it's really cool. But it's funny because there's so many times where I'm just like, wow. Like what is it what is the feature in Premiere where you can like automatically line everything up um when you change your aspect ratio and stuff? There's like some you're, it's got a specific I've, name. It's so cool. I probably don't know it, to be honest. <laughs> but are, there's are you some talking cool about visually or in your um your It'll timeline? actually like move things around. So it'll like if somebody's skiing or something, it'll automatically pan and do the motion for you. Oh, there's some Yes. I, I don't I know what you're talking about now, but I don't know the name of it either. <laughs> but that's a really cool feature. So there's these Oh, so auto reframe we have Yonke. yeah that's yes, it auto, auto reframe. reframe that's awesome and so yeah i mean it's like it's one of those situations where i should spend more time like really digging into things but i find that find that i use what i use <laughs> and yeah, um yeah absolutely but i'm always up for learning all right so i've just made this um new sequence i'm actually um yeah so I call yeah, it I've seen the cool. I've seen several tutorials uh, using auto reframe for you know horizontal video, but they're trying to make TikToks or something so that it stays vertical, and so it reframes the subject. I've definitely seen that before. Those are it's just so cool. Technology yeah. is getting so good, and it's just, I mean, to be able to like go out and for for the main Z9 piece, it was everything was shot by me, audio edited, um, video edited. It was all one person, you know, production, so, the BTS, we had, you know, another team. And I can't say that I didn't have, cause I had people helping and supporting me and finding wildlife with me, like, but it's really nice to be able to like have such small footprints as well. Well, I was going to ask, did you produce that entire shoot? Like, did you have to go and find, you know, these people to hire and, you know, uh, or, or did you have help? I, I, I did all of that. It was really nice. The wildlife biologist yeah. definitely helped me with logistics of, of, um, getting the locations and the contracts and, and going through the... Right. So not only were <sighs> you uh, getting new equipment to use on a shoot, you also had to go and produce the whole shoot. That's... It was a little stressful. A yeah. I, I will say that I, I'm definitely moving. You know, I, maybe I'm wrong here, but I feel like I'm all about collaboration and outsourcing, but I feel like I'm still developing my style. And it's really hard to outsource an edit when you're still learning how you like to cut things and how mm -hmm. you like things to visually look. I found with photography that I developed my own editing style. And then when I was able to articulate that to somebody, I was able to outsource. But I'm still in that, you know, I mean, 
I'm still in the learning phase with video. Yeah. Like I, I, I consider myself to be newer in the industry and I want to develop my own aesthetics and my own style. And then by all means, I can't wait till I can hire somebody to do my editing and my audio. And, and I think that that's going to be like, and it may be, you know, I say that all poetic and everything, but maybe I'm a little bit controlling sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, um, I have trouble well, outsourcing for, you know, finding, <laughs> finding what you like is what it's all about. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So I've made this sequence here and day one, while our whole shoot was on uh, high altitude wildlife, I will admit I did practice and um, with prairie dogs before we went to the mountains. <laughs> so That's... day one was one of the bonus days where they flew in and they let me play with the camera the day before the shoot. And I went and I, I... so it's funny because it's like everything's high altitude wildlife. And then there's like a couple of prairie dogs like actually <laughs> in there because I could not use the footage. But I'm like, nobody actually said anything about That's that, which amazing. made me really happy because the prairie dogs are so cute. But day one was our practice day. And I'm going to go ahead and pull all of these over to my sequence. I could totally I did... see. I was just I was going to say I can totally see like a call sheet that says day one <laughs> playing with prairie dogs. <laughs> It was like, it was just such a fun bonus day. It was really, really, um, yeah, I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, I've got, so this little, I made this symbol here for my proxies to go in and mm -hmm. off, but we're not gonna worry about that. I just wanna make sure that they were on. I didn't, with the amount of footage here, I will say it's a little different than what I did yesterday because I'm, I, a lot of times when I have this much footage to go through, I don't put things into slow motion before I put them on the timeline. And then I slow them down. I watch it in real time and then I cut the good bits out in real time. So I don't have to, it, it's faster, you know? Yeah. So you guys are going to see the real well, time, like really fast jittery movements, that, right? Um, same thing as yesterday. Yeah. I'm going to scroll through. I actually know these clips. I really like when the prairie dog comes up and eats. How cute is that, right? And um, so I think that's the clip I'm going to use. And I'm going to use the same tools that I talked about yesterday. I just want these hands. Um, I'm going to use this razor tool, select that part right on the blue line, um, and do my be, cut. Are you going to hmm? be using the audio from this as well? Um, oh, let me mute my audio. Actually, I found that our week in the mountains, or, or it was very windy. So mm -hmm. I, I, I found there's a couple of clips in here where I use the audio, but the rest of the audio I used for the final Z9 piece, I did... Um, <sighs> I'll admit, I did uh, license the the sounds. I licensed yeah. sound effects. So well, even it, things like elks, elk bugling. Right. <laughs> there was so much wind when the elks were bugling. And plus, we talked yesterday about how yeah. I often yeah. record my breathing and all sorts of well, things. So yeah, I mean, you know, you have to sweeten, right? And you have to sweeten with audio. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that. So I went ahead and just muted this whole audio track so that you guys don't hear you know, hear everything here, especially like us talking about the camera. It was really funny because while Nikon was recording me talking, they wanted me to say what I was experienced through the camera. So I would be like, oh, yes, look at that. Oh, well, so I we do want to hear the audio. No, I don't. <laughs> it's like I don't usually talk when I photograph. So it was really funny when I got the audio tracks back. I was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> that was the silliest thing ever. Like, I don't know, but whatever. Um, so I went ahead and used this cut tool. And once again, I'm going to go back and use the selection tool and I'm just going to cut out everything I am not using. So I'm going to cut out that. Do you want me to, um, before we get into this, is it better for me to show the final piece and then or just um, I mean, show it towards the end? It's really up to you. If you want to say what we're making and then, you know, okay. or show what we're making and then make it, uh, you know, kind of walk us through it. That's fine too. It's whatever you're, you, you know, feel comfortable with. Okay. Sounds good. So I'm looking at this other prairie dog. I like this. I like when something else happens. And right around here, and I'm just going to cut that clip, you'll see a fly goes. Yeah. Do you see that fly? <laughs> yes. That's the clip I want. Just that little tiny, <laughs> tiny bit of the fly going. That's, that's yeah, that's the gold here. Um, and then here, the prairie dog once again. And, you know, I like finding this repetitive behavior and photographing it in different ways so that I can cut back and forth from like a tight and a loose shot. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I love the prairie dog's hands. You know, it's funny me talking about like, so I'm just going in, I'm using the cut tool. 
I'm using the select tool and I'm just trimming it, trimming it down, looking for the change in movement, looking for something that'll look. So this change in movement might be here when the prairie dog just kind of looks. And the thing is I make these cuts a little bit tighter than you would think because I'm gonna slow all this footage down. We've got a mix match right now where we have um, a, a timeline here that has 29 or 30 frames per second, 29.97. And everything over here is shot at 120 frames per second. So we're gonna have to slow it down. Well, you don't have to slow it down. You can keep more frames in there, but we're gonna slow it down to do that slow motion effect. So it matches that 29 frames. So we've got this prairie dog up here. I don't think I'm gonna use this. There's no movement in it. Um, and then this one is really cool because I actually, I'm going to unmute it for a second. This is when they yelp. Can you hear that? I hear a little chirp. Yeah, that's what Slight I want. Slight chirp. Yeah, yeah. Slight chirp. So I kept this in case I wanted to try to pull that chirp out. But um, I didn't end up using it for the final piece. I didn't end up using these. I just kind of did these really short clips here. I'm going to do my right click. Actually, no, I don't want to do ripple delete. I'm going to undo that. Eh, control Z or I'll just pull these apart. I'll show you why. Okay, so now, and I pulled the two dots together to expand my timeline um, and I can move where I'm at there. I'm gonna select all the files, right click on them. And now I'm gonna do that speed duration. And do you guys remember the math from yesterday? <laughs> like, so if my target output is 30 frames per second and I shot at 120 frames per second, how, what percentage, remember you divide the target output by the um, shot frame rate. So you divide 30 by 120 and you get that 25%, okay? Bit of math. Um, all right, so now I've got these clips that I'm probably gonna cut down even more because I really only have the attention span for like half a second of anything. So let's see, where does it get good? Oh, that's good right at the beginning. I'm just gonna do a super short clip here. And then I am going to look at the fly. Let's see how the fly looks. Yeah, that fly going oh. across, I think was kind of fun, right? But I'm yeah. going to cut this on the front and the back. So this is my kind of favorite clips from day one of shooting. And I am going to just look at this last. Oh yeah, I love this. Maybe this is a good opener for the prairie dog. Um, so thinking, oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put, ooh, hang on. I need to pull my dots together so I can see the timeline better. <laughs> I'm gonna put this tight one at the beginning and then I'm going to maybe, let's see, what's a good order? The eating together and then the fly buzzing around at the end. So maybe this is kind of a fun little sequence. Super short, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Right. So I've like got my sequence and I can, you know, name this sequence if I wanted to rename it something like uh, Prairie Dogs. But now I'm going to go ahead and create a new sequence and I'm going to start working on some of the day two footage, which is bigger. Um, so we're going to go to new sequence. And when I went in there and created that sequence, oh, I didn't save it. I've got it saved here, but I'm going to make it again and I'm going to save it so that we have yeah. Did I as forget you, to save it? As you do that, I'm going to just uh, welcome everybody uh, from YouTube and uh, those of you on Behance. Uh, you know, get your questions in. If you have any questions for Christy, um, we are with uh, Christy Odom today, and she's walking us through her process for making slow motion video uh, from her wildlife shoots. All right, and we're going to call this. Yeah, sorry. And this is your, uh, you're doing the second sequence here. Yeah, I'm going to do the second sequence. So I've now saved this sequence and I've called it Adobe Live 4K. But I'm going to call this sequence name day two. I can call it, yeah, mm -hmm. day two. So now I've got a brand new sequence that's my day two. And I think that's what I did last time. I saved it as Adobe 4K instead of saving the preset. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Anyways, the first day, the Prairie Dogs is called Adobe 4K, which is fine. Uh, maybe. We have a, a topic um i guess a, a a question from chat 
that is very topical for for what we're working on. Christy, what is your favorite animal? <laughs> <laughs> I have like a real soft spot for seals and sea lions. Oh. Because underwater, they look like dog mermaids and they play with you and they're so beautiful. Dog mermaids. I love I'm it. so, it's funny because on the beach, they're just like, they're stinky and they burp, but underwater, <laughs> they're just like these graceful dog mermaids. I'm kind of obsessed with sea lions. And it's funny because that's the one thing I've like really never been on assignment for. Oh, wow. <laughs> I would, lo I need to create uh, an assignment. Like, yeah, well, put it out there. <laughs> I think you're putting it out there. So let's see there. if the universe answers. And one of my other favorite animals is I'm obsessed with bears and I, I am working a project with bears right now. So Andean bears, and I, I am going back to Bolivia soon for oh, wow. um, more work with bears. Um, but yeah, bears are really cool. <laughs> and I'm working with bees, so bears and honeys right now. Okay. So my day two was really nice because like our first day we got to see this elk bugling and in the fall being close to Rocky Mountain, like there's just, it's just one of the most magical things seeing elks bugling. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull those in here and, you know, pulled it in at real time. I'm going to turn the mute it, but maybe I shouldn't mute it. Maybe you guys yeah, should let's hear. hear it. Let's hear it. Well, let me cut it down and then I'll, cause I don't know what I'm rambling about at this time. <laughs> Sometimes I get so excited that I may cuss and it catches it. And I don't want to say a, yeah. a loud fudge comment or something yep. like, cause I get really excited and yeah. Anyways. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. Sorry, that's way too much. Yeah, we're not on a we're not on a delay, I don't think. So we can't bleep it. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep it muted. But I know when they're bugling, I don't. There's the bugle. Do you oh, see man. that? Yeah. Ooh. so I'm going to I do want to hear it that I will. I will make sure you hear it because, yeah, so all the way throughout. I don't think I said any cuss words when I was filming <laughs> that. Um, but after I got the bugling from behind, I ended up moving and it was a repetitive behavior and I ended up getting the elk bugling from different angles so I could mm -hmm. cut in Isn't that beautiful. That and this is isn't even amazing. slowed yeah. down yet. So I'm just, I'm cutting this frame to just get the singing. And this ended up being the opening shot to the campaign was the elk bugling. Cause it was also nice to be able to like, yeah. I'm just going to use those two clips because that's all I really used. Now I'm going to actually before I um, before actually, I'm going to pull that back so you can just drag and pull. I'm going to unmute so you can hear the song. Let me know if you can hear this. Did, could you hear it? Yeah, it's there. It's very low, but it's there. So beautiful. And that's one oh, yeah, thing that I, that. you could hear this one. Yeah, that's one thing yeah. you could also hear the wind. There was so much wind. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I ended up purchasing the, um, yeah. I licensed the sound effect and people had gone out and recorded it and it was great. I was like, you know, anyways, like, so if I did have a clean audio clip here though, one of the things that I would do is I would, before I move this clip to slow motion, because the elk bugling in slow motion isn't really going to sound that good. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. going to sound all distorted. So I'd right click on this here and then I, I unlink these two and then I've got an unlinked audio clip. And what I do is I move it to a channel that's not muted. And then when I do the slow motion here, which is, you know, right click speed yeah. duration back to that 25%. I, um, Let's see, where does it, the bugling kind of starts right about here. So I, um, you know, put it at the right point and, you know, kind of match it up that way. So I played the audio back real time and yeah, but we're not going to um, use that. Does Did that sound all right, Wade? Yeah. Yeah. You okay, could, we cool. could hear it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, having these audio clips are really kind of fun if you, if you do have good sound. Um, so now I'm going to do this one. And again, um, that was an external mic. No, that was just the in camera. camera. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. And when you right click, you can do these ripple deletes. We talked a bit about that yesterday. If I'm going too fast or so now I can like kind of cut in here. And I think what I did was, oh, so much at the beginning. Ah, oh, it just gets, it needs to get right to it. Right. People aren't going to watch her. So I go straight into the bugle. I use the license sound and pulled that in. 
And um, like right about here, I think I maybe cut it to like the part of the bugle here, mm -hmm. the mouth is open. So I'm just kind of cutting down these. Um, but something like this, it kind of just, so watch this. Okay, let me, I'm kind of going a little faster because yesterday we went into so much detail about cutting the clips and stuff like that. So yeah, that's fine. Kind of do it like that. And then it kind of continues. Now, the one problem I'm having is um, the left side to the right side to the left side. Mm -hmm. Um, so over here in the effects panel, the video effects, I would probably go back to that transform. Um, and then I would do a vertical flip right here. Oh, pff, not vertical. Silly, silly horizontal flip. Yeah, I mean, there we that's go. That's a choice. That's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> so now the bugle starts there and it continues there and then it goes through to the end. So yeah, now I've got a nice little bugling mm -hmm. sequence that I like. Um, how are we doing in the chat? Questions, concerns? Yeah, guys, we have any? We don't have any questions uh, unless I'm missing some. Um, okay. I'll check back. But, awesome. Uh, so but we are. I do want to give a little reminder. We will have an artist spotlight later on. Um, but yeah, until then, let's keep going. Awesome. Okay, I've got my whole timeline. I'm gonna make another one of these sequences, and this one I'm really excited about because. Another one of my favorite, I have a lot of favorite animals. <laughs> In the chat, you guys have to it's... tell me what your favorite animals are too now. Yeah, <laughs> like, chat, give us, I wanna... give us... <laughs> Oh, we do have a question from YouTube, but yeah, chat, give us your favorite favorite animal. Let's <laughs> let's hear it. Uh, the question from YouTube is, uh, let's see, is there a way to edit out wind noise uh, audio frequencies <laughs> or do they overlap with the bugle too much? There is a way, I'm not very good at it though. And so I will admit that I've, yeah, I, I, I'm not very uh, good at it. So not good at it yet. That's not what, yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so many like denoising and de mm -hmm. there's all sorts of things you can do, but I'm like, I know I'm really not very good at audio and I end up just like licensing audio at the end and things, but, um, mad props to those audio people out there. I'm like, I can't be too hard on myself for not knowing audio. <laughs> like yeah, I'm, yeah. It's a world of its own. Do you do audio aid? Uh, very little. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel you on that. Speaking of audio, we sound a lot better today. Thanks to Paco. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Paco. <laughs> who, who has uh, um, helped us upgrade our own audio for this stream. So, um, yeah, that, that kind of speaks to my own audio skills. <laughs> in a way. But, um, yeah, now you can hear our voices much better <laughs> anyways. Oh, okay. So now I'm going to go into, um, file new sequence and I am going to, um, go down here and I think I called it Adobe live 4k. Yep. And I'm going to call this sequence, um, D three. Um, so I just keep making these mini sequences and day three. Oh I my gosh. Yeah. Question. So you know, these are labeled by days. Uh, so did you specifically go for a different animal each day or yeah. was it just, that's what we saw <laughs> and so we stuck with it or how did that work? We had a very, it was, so Megan, who's, uh, yeah, I talked about her amazingness, like literally our timeline was like day one, photographing elks, day two, photographing pikas, marmots, and bighorns, and day three, like it was in, oh, we wow. hit, I think just about every, I, I don't know how she did it. But it was like, it was the most amazing thing. And also, you know, to be honest, I may cut these up later in my sequencing. Mm -hmm. And I find that having this together by days helps me with my color grading in a lot of ways. Um, because the lighting conditions mm -hmm. were the same and, you know, like just little nuances that might be similar on one day versus the other. So, I, you know, I had to pick a way to move things together. And sometimes like when I'm doing, like I did this video with bears and I, you know, kind of sequenced it to, you know, one was action bear shots. And then number two was um, sleeping lazy bear shots. And number three was, you know, people, people shots. So sometimes I, I just kind of think of, I change it up. I'm not too set in my ways with how I do that quite yet. Right. I was just curious because it it's uh, it was it seemed to be very nicely put together <laughs> like everything what's in its group. It's like it's like hold on elk you're not until day four. Uh, we're gonna have we're we're scheduling you for that. 
you guys are gonna be later. Yeah. No, it was, I mean, workflow is so important and it's so funny too, because I personally think that workflow is kind of boring to talk about, but it's so surprising that like, I find that it's so helpful to talk about it and to hear mm-hmm. about it. And I'm always like, oh, don't you wanna see the footage? Don't you wanna oh, see yeah. this? And then whenever yeah. I do a workflow class, it's like I get more signups. People are like super interested yes. in workflow, which is great. I, it's, I think it's the, they, they see the amazing results that you're getting and they're just like, how do I get that? So they're interested in the, you know, the nuts and bolts of it to, to make, they can make their work, you know, as a top notch as yours. I think that's the, the, <laughs> You know the curiosity the the learning the how do i do it you know and, and let's apply it to my own process because i do the same thing like i'm like oh this looks really cool how did they do that yeah. <laughs> exactly and i think that it's like you know and uh, i'm gonna um segue here for just a second did i put this in here but once again i have a photo to show you guys um day two here's all see i've got a workflow everything oh and I say that, and then I'm like, where did I put it? I put it here. <laughs> um, here's my camera settings. So this is my camera settings for day three, which we're going into as well. And I just wanted to share this as well, because people are really interested in how I'm getting the footage by, you know, through the camera. Um, so this was the pre-production Z9, and I was shooting at the 120 frames per second at 4K, which is that 2160. Um, I'm shooting 10 bit color depth. So I've got a little more information for my, I've got a lot more information mm-hmm. for my color depth. I've got my camera on all time autofocus um, with wide area and animal eye tracking. As you can see, it's got the eye of the marmot here and it follows around and it keeps it focusing for me. I choose a shutter speed that is usually double my um, frame rate. So me shooting at 120 frames per second, 250 is, you know, pretty close to double. I know it's not exact double, but it's the setting that is closest on my camera to double. Um, and then I'm, I'm constantly changing my ISO and my aperture depending on how much I want in focus and something that gives me the proper exposure. I've got my exposures on manual. Um, so I'm constantly looking through my histogram to see if there's whites that are getting lost and if mm-hmm. there's shadow detail. And this time I did my did my um, white balance correctly. <laughs> I have it on sunshine. I didn't have it on auto um, outdoor, which is yeah, you don't want to do the auto because it'll jump back and forth sometimes in the middle of your footage. So um, I have it on on sunshiny day here. Um, and I've got it on standard for my picture control. So I don't want anything too vivid because it's easier to add the the extra contrast and add things then take it away. So I'm always looking for something that's a little less punchy for my picture control. Um, nice. But that's my um, camera settings. <laughs> yeah, thanks thanks for sharing that. I think that's really interesting. We were just talking about, you know, the behind the scenes, this is sort of through the lens, sort of. So, <laughs> exactly. You know, I put this little settings. device on my camera, it's got little antennas and mm-hmm. somebody's sitting there and watching everything. It's, it's so funny, cause I'm like, it's so nerve wracking. It's like worse than seeing raw footage is somebody actually watching you through the camera, like somebody from mm-hmm. Nikon watching you through the camera as you're using their precious what? new camera. And I'm like, oh my so God. that wait, so that's, <laughs> that's what the, they, there was something like that happening. Yeah. Throughout the whole shoot. So people what? like I had like the head of the Nikon ambassador program, um, Mike Carrado was out there and he was literally like so, watching every way I was setting the camera up all oh, my shots and Oh yeah. Oh, they were with you. Okay. <laughs> I, I was, was so thinking. Scared. I was imagining like back at Nikon no, Labs, no, they had people no. with head, you know <laughs> monitors everywhere. That yeah, would be cool, cool though. But no, there was somebody in the field recording these for me, and so this is a screen grab from a video. Wow, nice. And that way, people could see how I was mm-hmm. setting up the camera and see how you know you see all those videos where Nikon shares about their new autofocus systems, and you can see the animal eye tracking and stuff like that. It's um, this is how they're recording. They use this, um, a, a Ninja device and an Atomos device. And, and yeah, now, now I use it for education, which is really nice. So on my workshops, if people are curious how I'm setting up my camera, they can oh, that's look. Cool. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great educational tool, but I wanted to share that with you all because, um, yeah, the transition from photo to video, this is one of the, the, the big things that was a challenge for me is trying to figure out a shutter speed that works because if I was photographing wildlife, I had a, um, you know, I have a 500 millimeter lens on here. Probably it's my favorite. Um, it's one of my favorites. Um, shooting at 250th of a second with a 500 millimeter lens might cause 
um, sh camera shake if I'm taking stills. Mm -hmm. But in video, this is my preferred shutter speed. So I'm constantly using different settings for photo and video. Um, yeah, but that's a little bit about my BTS. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. Speaking of the yellow belly marmots, day three was all about pikas and yellow belly marmots. And I have an obsession with pikas. I did a story on them that went online for National Geographic last year. And when Nikon first called me up about the shoot, they were like, do you have any ideas? And I was like, pikas. <laughs> they were like, what's a oh, pika? Cool. And I'm like, it's this little kind of mouse looking animal that's really super fast. And I want to, um, yeah, and then it, it, it expanded to like, I really want to celebrate mountain wildlife and, and prairie dogs, but <laughs> the prairie dogs snuck in. Um, yeah, so this, look, and I, I named them all kind of to remind me what's in the cliff. And this first mm -hmm. cliff I called beautiful pika. And then the pika looking funny, oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> pika shaking. I, I, I don't know. Like when I'm just kind of like viewing my files, I kind of give a little bit of a name. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, it just helps me out a little bit. Yeah silly day three look at all of this there's tons of day three stuff wow Woo, this was a good day of shooting <laughs> i'm gonna move it all into my sequence nice. um so we're doing sequence number three which is all about look at the pika <laughs> right oh my gosh yeah i'm gonna turn my mute on sorry so is cause... the pika where the pikachu comes from surely not i don't <sighs> surely not. it's i I, I don't know. If you look online, it says it's not, but how could it okay. not be? They're like oh, no. super it, fast, right? like, and they run and they gather flowers and hey, it's the, oh, they do. see that <laughs> jump? That's what I want to see in slow motion is the very yeah. end of that clip. I want that jump. Um, so do you whoa. know when you see it at, at, you know, real time, you're like, that's going to be a winner because yeah, you know you can slow like, it down. Exactly. Because you've got this like, Wee! <laughs> so let's see what that looks like when I slow it down to 25%. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do this formula? clip. Do you remember the formula in chat? <laughs> you you divide. Wait, let's see. What was it? The um, you divide. Uh, you start with the oh. frame rate you want to go to and you divide by the number of frames, right? So right? the frame, like the two frame? numbers that you're using is your, your target frame rate, which yep, we on. talked a little bit about this yesterday, like how for nature stuff, I like 30 frames per second. That's what I'm constantly exporting and delivering my, uh, my work at 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second gives a lot of detail. It's, it's a really beautiful frame rate. 24 is more of a cinematic look. You get to slow it down to 20% if you're doing mm -hmm. 24 frames per second though, which is really nice. But I, I kind of stick with my 30 frames per second because I like all of the the detail like if you've if you've ever watched like a soap opera and you know how like sharp it is or a nature documentary but then yet when you watch a movie there's a little bit more smoothness yeah. to it yeah. so that's kind of a good way to think about those two different frame rates um but you take your target frame rate what you're going to export as me i'm always 30 and you take what you've shot it at 120 mm -hmm. frames per second so when you take those 120 frames per second and you pull it out to the 30 frames per second um you know you're gonna extend the time so you take that 30 frames per second and divide it by 120 so 30 divided by 120 and you get 25 percent which is what i slow down my footage for optimal viewing does that make sense yeah and i'm just i'm like i'm a little uh, i get numbers backwards and frontwards forwards and backwards um so if i said that wrong i just yeah we <laughs> I'm sorry. I love I, no, I love great. the pikas. <laughs> I'm gonna. This is one of my problems when I'm editing. Is I'll just be like, oh my gosh, look. Let me let me reverse that because you, you can do all sorts of cool things. You can even like if you right click and go to speed duration and click this reverse, and then wait. Oh, well, I might need to be rendered or something. All right. Yeah, it looks like it's. Uh, uh, do I render it and show what this looks like? This is um, why I get so distracted i get distracted and then i'm like well i just spent way too much time uh, no. uh i don't know proxies are on it's, uh, whatever 
Um, let's just undo all that because we don't just, really need to spend trust. time trying yeah. to trying to reverse the bike and chunk because then I'm like I just spent the last I don't know however long not getting my work done I have all these whatever videos to edit and I just really wanted to see and we saw big horns oh, see oh, the wow. big horns yeah these are the and there's oh, small the horns <laughs> there's... oh that's not what they're called never mind <laughs> So it's really cool too, because like, I love how intuitive the cameras are. And so the animal eye tracking, it's switched to the one, the dominant eye. So it'll find, it'll oh, figure out, Hey, that's nice. Yeah. And I didn't have to do that on my own. I was just like, wow, it kind of, when one head would turn the wrong way and then the other one would become dominant. It did this like, see right here too. Yeah. It's like this head's turned too much. This one's now dominant. And I'm like, whoa, yeah, that's, that's what I was, cool. Yeah, that's what I was talking about yesterday. I thought I thought for a minute you were racking focus. And I was like, that's, <laughs> I mean, dead on. Nailed it every time. It's, yeah. it's like, it's so exciting. Like where we're at with technology is just super exciting. So I like maybe this clip here. Let's just cut this clip down. And yeah, right where the bighorn looks at us. That looks like one that I might use. Okay, so I'm gonna just cut that. The rest of this, uh, not as interesting. They kind of walk, and we get back to pikas, which maybe I should have like, I don't know. Let's check out this clip. And then, and this all, <laughs> this is the pika looking funny. Watch, it'll do this, it'll do this jumper. It just goes, oh. <laughs> Uh, it looks like I it's meme worthy it. it's meme worthy yeah. it totally is you could like totally do a the dramatic um, what was the i can't remember yeah what i'm gonna go ahead and slow yeah. this down because i want to see it at 25 percent because i love this clip so you could do the here it goes Whoa. <laughs> then you could even like you could do your keyframes here that we talked about yesterday like i could put a scale in here and just for you know mm -hmm. um i know where this see. is going <laughs> this is gonna be fun where is uh Whoa. There it is. Let's see. What am I doing here? Oh, there we go. All right. So we're going to start at 100. We're going to move to ending right around there. Yes. I'm going to get rid of the position keyframes. Um, and the keyframings are all up here. And this sequence is, or this timeline here, reflects the timeline here of your, your segment. So I can start off at 100% and then end. And I dragged it all the way left and right just so that it's clean. But you could do the whole. Mm -hmm. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a question in chat. Right, Mode Avoid is asking, uh, was this done with a mirrorless? Uh, and I believe the answer is yes, but let's mm -hmm. confirm with Christy. Yes, it was the Z9. It was a pre-production Z9. So it was, um, yeah, I don't really know what the difference is between a pre-production and a regular one, except for it's not the one that goes on the market. It's just the one that's um, before the sale on the market. Mm -hmm. But um, Nikon has asked me to say pre-production <laughs> when I talk about this footage. <laughs> um, so I think that that's, but I've got the, um, whatchamacallit, I've got the proxy on right now. So you'll mm -hmm. see that the image isn't quite as sharp as how it was um, shot at. And I can turn my proxy off and then oh, yeah. you see all the details yeah. come in. But I've just done that just because I don't want any sort of lag for what you guys are seeing, because this is a pretty big um, edit to be doing live on a Zoom. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a great shot. That is. Yeah, pikas are so cute. And you can see all the moving around. All that moving around gets kind of taken away when I... And that's the thing about slow motion is slow motion is really a great gateway into video because it gets rid of those imperfections, you know? Mm -hmm. So you see that shake. That's what I want. I want that shake. So I'm going to um, just cut that down to that shake. And that's what I'm going to want to see in slow motion. All righty. And yeah, I'm just going to keep... Oh, this one. I've got to turn on the audio for this one. Because I think this is one of the Yelps that actually I use the audio. And so I think that's oh, important. Nice. See this little, all right, let me, all right. See that Yelp? Mm -hmm. It yelped. Okay. I'm going to just use that Yelp, but I am going to turn the audio on so you guys can hear it. And this is one of those situations where I'm like, yeah, I think I can use that audio <laughs> clip, right? So I'm going to do that right click. I'm going to unlink this. I'm going to put this down and you've got all your audio channels here. A1, A2, A3, A4. My keeper audios, I usually put on A2. 
And I've unlinked them so that when I slow motion this, it's not going to slow motion the audio because mm -hmm. I want the, I want these to be separate. I'm going to put this somewhere underneath one of the pikas. It might be this one. It might be a different one, but oh, my earphone just fell out of my ear. All right, there we go. All right, so we're going to just go in and do a few more of this. Um, how's it going? Any other questions as I cut these down? Yeah. Well, I'm not seeing any at the moment. A lot of, uh, oh, this is cute. That's so cute. Those kind of things coming over with the pika footage. Oh, well, thank you. I love pikas. They're so cute. I love movement. So that little jump up is something I'm going to use. It's nice to have a little more you know, detail. Is this right still there. the longhorn, but the baby? That's the baby that horn? is the um, baby bighorn. Baby bighorn. Sorry, I said longhorn. No, know. it's all right. good. I saw yeah. some of my I saw some longhorns just last week. They were beautiful. Um, when I'm photographing, when I'm taking the videos of the animals, I'm constantly looking for little things like how the feet are, you know, how the head is, because it's nice to just kind of be able to clip to details. Um, I don't think I ended up using this piece at all. It was just a little too much distraction around, too much going on. So I liked the little baby and I liked the wind going through. One of the elements. Yeah, a lot of wind noise. Yeah, oh, sorry. I totally forgot to put that back on mute. <laughs> oh, thank you for that. <laughs> I, was like, I thought you were like, yeah, listen to this wind. It's awesome. No, <laughs> no, no. So maybe I'll use a little clip of the wind there, but or not the wind, the wind in the. But this is too much like the first clip. And when I'm doing this for some big project i'm definitely spending more time with these clips and trying to find the right spots what uh, animal is this yeah on that note uh jackie in chat asks um how long are your original video clips before cutting them cutting them down um well they're they range for sure like this one here and i haven't cut them down before importing them this one is how long is this one if i clip on it um properties uh, this one's one of the longer ones. Um, where I thought it said the time on there. Um, here we go. This is yeah. a 38 second clip. Um, so yeah, sometimes they're up to 38 seconds, but and this one's really long. Um, sometimes they're super short. So I'm just taking a lot of like little clips, you know. But this one, like you can actually see, I have an orange car. You can see the car, my car, in the eye. <laughs> Really interesting. Uh, so unfortunately, like this area, um, the bighorns are becoming a little too used to the visitors. Mm. Um, they actually have started like the bighorns and the, um, whatchamacallit, the bighorns and the mountain goats. Um, this is a mountain that's, the name is being changed from Mount Evans to Mount Blue Sky. So I'm gonna refer to it as a Mount Blue Sky because um, I'm really excited about its new name. Um, but Mount Blue Sky has um, it, it, it has a problem because of all the added visitors to the park and the big horns are and the mountain goats are going to cars and mm. licking exhaust yeah. pipes and all sorts Ooh. of things to get and going to the toilets and you know they're attracted to that stuff so i'm actually working with a group that's um quite amazing it's actually a conservation group over um founded by the denver zoo where they get volunteers to go up and <laughs> they uh they spread mountain lion urine around uh, the parking lots because yeah. that deters the animals from you know going into the parking lots and um so it's really exciting. It's like, you know, I remember the first time I went out there, there's these these two women, they're going up all the way Mount, Mount um, Blue Sky and they're carrying a whole bunch of mountain lion urine that I think they bought at a place called the P-Mart, which is, I was like, wait, these places exist? And um, yeah, they were spreading it all throughout. So it's, um, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, that, that human wildlife um, conflict was there. Mm -hmm. Um, when we were there, the, the bighorns did come up to the vehicles. Um, something that we didn't have any mountain lion urine or anything on us to <laughs> deter yeah. them from our vehicle. But, um, so that's, yeah, the car and the reflection. I don't really usually like that sort of, um, you know, close encounters. Cause I think it's, you know, I don't know, yeah. um, a reflection it's... of what's going on, but right. Here's another one of those look shots. Mm. Here it goes. Here. Oh. <laughs> 
Now, I'm not doing anything to change the behavior or call the animals or anything like that, but wildlife is super aware that we're there. Like, it is yeah. um, definitely, you know, knows that we are, you know, out there filming and things like that. Um, we do as much as we can to, to have no impact, but I think presence in any way, shape, or form, like scent mm -hmm. or anything, if I decide to shower and have a, a soap smell to me, that's definitely something that, is that the animals... Is that something you consciously try to, you know, avoid, like, being... I mean, obviously you're not going to be shouting at them uh to, to say hey look up here but i mean like avoiding you know um i don't know any kind of noises or like you said smells uh that sort of thing when you go out on these is that like is there a checklist that you try and hit or i'm just curious we try to keep as quiet as possible for sure um it definitely felt strange like me mumbling through this like for while i was taking mm -hmm. photos um but we we definitely want to like not disturb wildlife as much as, as possible. And there's great um, ethical standards and things that you can find online, like going to the National Park websites and, and, and reading about if you encounter an animal, how far away you need to stay right. um, for the different types of animals. And there's also a great guide. The Audubon Guide to Birding is actually amazing and it can be applied for a lot of different wildlife. There's also an ethic ethics guide on the International League of Conservation Photographers. Oh, nice. um, so I highly recommend before you go out to, to, to read up and, and see what you can do to make little to no impact. Because one of the reasons we're photographing and filming these animals is because of how magnificent, how, you yeah. know, it is, it's a gift to share the planet with them. And um, the more we can do to respect the, the more we can kind of, you know, make this planet a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And is is a conservation photographer and filmmaker like i'm constantly wanting to get great footage so that i can get other people to love and respect the wildlife but how do you do that with as little impact as possible you know right. never well it's good to know that you, there are resources out there that people can look up if they want to go out and take yeah. photos themselves and don't like bring like your own mountain lion pee anywhere or anything like that leave that to conservationists and experts um but also a lot of times like local zoos have great resources like i was shocked to learn how much conservation a lot of the zoos do do i mean some zoos are not some are better than others obviously like um but the ones that i'm affiliated close with like denver zoo like the amount that they do to con with conservation is it's just mind-blowing and and the fact that they're actually using a portion of their revenue to to help out species that are disappearing and going out in the field and doing mm -hmm. um i the yeah it's 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 quite amazing so um contacting local zoos or local wildlife to kind of figure out like what yeah yeah absolutely um if uh if if we have people just coming in we are uh watching christy odom work through her process of uh, making slow motion video um and uh welcome in anybody that's just welcome. now coming in we're gonna have an artist spotlight soon uh it's probably in i'm guessing 23 ish minutes sounds good i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like finish with um, I'm just going to cut all of these because this will take, I could sit here and play with my pika footage all day. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just do this one last clip of the pika running. This pika runs over. It's so cute. Watch. Ah, there we go. Oh, nice. Yeah. So yeah, this stuff looks really kind of weird right now because it is in real speed and it was intended for slow motion. So now that I've got these pika and bighorns, I need to... I want to make sure everything is gapped out. You see how there's gaps between everything? Because I'm going to select all this footage with the exception of that audio two footage, which should not be selected. Is that selected? I unlinked it, didn't I? You did? I think you did unlink it. Oh, Maybe it's not, not unlinked. No. All right, I'm going to unlink it. Okay. So now, and the reason I'm unlinking it, because I'm about to slow everything down, but I don't want to slow that foot, that audio down. So see how that's not selected? It's still blue, if you can actually see that. I'm going to right click. I'm going to do my speed duration. I'm going to go to 25%. So now all my clips are 25%. So now they're all slow motion. And now I'm going to just kind of pile things together. I like this. Um, you see how the pika is looking? It's kind of nice because that pika looking might be a good segue to the um, marmot looking. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pair the pikas together, but I'm going to put 
the marmot looking. And sometimes I like use the different channels. So I'll like move all my big horns to right here to my video number two and all my pikas can stay on one. And I'm just gonna put this together super fast. Maybe I start with the pikas call, right? Cause that gets your attention. It's making a noise. And then the pikas running, running to shaking to looking. So we'll do running to shaking to looking. I think that's a good sequence, mm. right? Yeah. So I love hearing the squeak as you scrub past it. That's Oh yeah, the squeak. The squeak is so good. All right. So after the marmot looking, I definitely want this other marmot looking. And you just kind of play with this a little bit, you know, like you play with it a lot, actually. You know, I love the big horns too. We'll just put the big horns. Um, we'll do that one first with the big horns. And then the looking. And then the jumping. We'll do this one over. So I'm just kind of I'm going a little fast because I want to get to audio next. Oh, Is yeah, audio fine. what's next on ours? Okay. Oh, we're good for time? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to get rid of this one. I don't need that one anymore. We have about 20 minutes until the artist spotlight. And then after that, we'll come back and we'll have about 15-ish more minutes. Okay. Sounds good. Well, this is just a real quick put together. I'm going to put this over here. So I just kind of paired, you know, the facials of the big horns, the, you know, running, the look at the end. I might pair the looking together. Mm -hmm. Let's just, I'm going to put this. So I'm just selecting and moving things around. Um, all right. And we're just going to do all that right click ripple deletes. Oh, what was way over there? <laughs> you see that? I did. I was like, I had something way over here. What am I forgetting? Oh, the pika running. Yeah, we need this. You need to come back over here. <laughs> <laughs> just going to ripple delete and pull it right over. But I want that pika running right after this pika jumps. OK. So I'm putting together a mini sequence because we got a lot of stuff that I want to do. Pika yelping, pika running, pika jumping. And then pika looking to the marmot looking. OK, and now I've got this little squeak. I want to line that squeak up with when it yelps. So it's yelping right around there. That might be a good time for that squeak to come out. All right. So let's see how my little mini sequence look, looks. <laughs> that goes a little long, but yeah, I'd probably cut these all a little bit at the front and the back end. Oh, that one way out there. Did you oh, see that? Yeah. It didn't it get didn't, the slow yeah, motion. It wasn't selected when you did the... Uh... the right click. So now yeah. I've got to pull everything back a little bit to make sure that I've got space for the time that that slow motion is going to take, I'm going to go ahead in here and I am going to just cut these clips down. They were too long for me. Okay. All right. So here we go. <laughs> the pika <laughs> jumping. There it runs over. And that would be a good clip for um, warp stabilization. Um, so here we go. The look. <laughs> <laughs> The marmot mm. look. I've got these this way too long. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta go ahead and cut this down. This is way too long. My attention span is not anywhere near that long. Okay, so yeah, now it goes from pika look funny to marmot look funny. So a lot of times, just making things shorter, making things mm -hmm. shorter. <laughs> <laughs> And then making this shorter, and so that clips to right after the look. Then you've got the marmot face right there. And these are clips that, yeah, I probably would do some warp stabilization on. And warp stabilization, I will say, when you're doing slow motion footage, you have to nest your sequences um, before you, and you've got to toggle your proxies off if you've got those on. Mm -hmm. um, but you right click here and you nest your sequence. And that makes like, a, you know, kind of a bit, a bit of a compressed file. It kind of, you know, you get rid of a lot of information when you do that. And then if you go over here to um, distort, drag and drop this warp stabilize on here, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make the sequence super short because um, I'd like to show you guys warp stabilize because it's freaking cool. But you see all this movement? Yeah. So if I throw warp stabilize and warp stabilize, you can see it working over here, um, analyzing all the frames. And sometimes I have to go in and fine tune the method of warp stabilization. 
but you'll see it kind of goes from that to like a much smoother. You see that it was like not jittery, oh, yeah. smooth. Um, and that's actually did a great job just then. But sometimes you have to go in here and change your method around um, from subspace warp to perspective. These are a step down. It does like warp stabilizing on a little bit less of a level. Um, so if it's sometimes making some sort of distortion or, you know, like it takes your, it zooms in a little bit. So you're losing a mm -hmm. little bit of that resolution, but warp stabilize is like amazing. Cause you saw all the jittering. So I would probably yeah. go in and do quite a bit of this, but you can't do a lot after you do the warp stabilize because it does compress the file, the nested sequence. So, um, yeah, just use that as like one of your last steps. Now I've got these first couple of days. And I want to talk about um, a lot of putting video together is is about mood. And mm -hmm. you know, one of the biggest things to make mood is music. So once I've started kind of seeing a bit of the feel and how things are working together, I pick music. And so once I've got all my mini sequences and then that way, my master sequence, I can put that music in and I can pair the different emotions, like maybe the, the kind of humorous pica running and mm -hmm. shaking and stuff, or, you know, the, the, the looks could go towards a more humorous part of the music. Um, so I ended up, I did license all my music for this project from triple scoop music. Um, and have I already pulled the music in? I haven't pulled the music in yet. So I'm just going to go to um file import and i have put my music file um oh it's under audio surprising look at cody, how organized i am cody bear saying the marmot footage is making uh, her want to draw a marmot character <laughs> oh i love it oh my gosh you gotta send Absolutely. that to me yes. that would be amazing all right here's the here's the piece that i licensed for this and that's all the I, okay i'm gonna admit it for when the pikas were running around i licensed um rat footsteps <laughs> so you're the little bitter pattern but those are like nice. i was able to find rat footsteps that i was able to license for the project and i'm like i i it sounds like pike is running but if you listen really closely you can hear these little rat footsteps so now i'm going to go into i'm going to do a new sequence i'm going to do my master sequence um and i'm going to go new sequence i'm going to call this one um uh, uh I'll just call it TL for timeline. I'm being boring there. Um, but I want this to be that Adobe Live 4K that I set up, right? So I've got this. So now I'm gonna pull that music in that I, I, I'm gonna pull that in right here. Um, so this is the song that I ended up licensing. And a lot of times like I will play my videos and go in and research libraries. And, and one of these days, like I'm really hoping to like start working with musicians to actually construct music so the the music can kind of be um more customized uh which i'm really excited that'll be like one of my next phases nice. one day um but for now i i go into my music library at triple scoop and talking so much i get yeah. dryness <laughs> yeah take, take your time yeah and then um yeah and so this is the song that i chose let me know if you can hear it yeah we can hear it Are you going to use the sequence we just made with this or? Yeah. So now okay. I can go in here and I can go through, I don't know what I was doing with the sequence. I can go through my day one sequence, which is the, I ended mm -hmm. up starting with the elk bugling because I liked the drama, like that sound that I could bring in. Yeah. So I'm going to go into this day two. I'm going to do, so I'm going to select everything. Control C. I'm going to go to that master time lapse and I am going to start it with that. So now I'm going to start pulling these things in to kind of put this and piece this together. Um, and then I start thinking about like, well, what could go after the elk bugling? And I actually chose the pika, pika doing its yelp because mm -hmm. I thought that like going from elk bugling to, oh, let me see. I didn't mute that main channel. I'm going to paste this over here because I have this little bit of audio on audio too. You actually want to pull your audio track. I pull it down, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna right click and do ripple delete and pull that together. So this is kind of the beginning of, and I did all those, you know, I was showing you guys yesterday, the fade ins and things like that. You might wanna start with a fade in and you might wanna like um, 
do some of the warp stabilizing and all that good stuff. So those are things that, you know, this this obviously took me over a few hours to make. It took me <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> it took my life for like two months. No, it didn't take my life for two months. It was the most beautiful of this ever. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I gotta play that so you can hear it. And there's all sorts of ways of um, adjusting your audio levels. like. So I want to show you that real quick because, um, you know, audio, a lot of times I'm finding that with audio effects, um, because of that wind coming up, a lot of times I have to do like a little custom, you know, fade in or something mm -hmm. like that with these audio tracks. And you can do that by like dragging and dropping things from audio transitions up here. Um, but another thing that's like, you know how I showed you the keyframing yesterday where you yeah. can zoom in and you can do things. You can do keyframing on your audio track. So I might want the music to mute just a little bit so you could hear that pika yelp, right? Which this is something. So you know how you can pull the dots together and you can expand things. You can also pull these dots together. Oh man. Yeah, That's super cool. High level. Yeah. Pulling the dots together. I'm such a <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Am I ever gonna be asked to speak for Adobe again when I'm using terms like you pull the dots together? No, you're fine, you're fine. Uh <laughs> There's a lot of uh, people saying they love they're loving the uh, the music choice, <laughs> dramatic, and then the squeak, of course. The squeak is so good. Yeah. So check this out real quick because this is fun. So if I go into this major audio clip here, and you can change all your levels, you can make your volume like higher, lower, anything like that. But if I right click here, I can go to show clip keyframes volume, right? And I can do volume level and you get these little keyframes where you can like pull your audio up and down. This is like so cool. Hang on, let me see if I'm okay. And then you use, which is the, so I can, oh, I didn't get my keyframe in there. Did I, what am I doing? Why is it? Okay. Show clip keyframes volume. Yeah, there. Okay, so now I can go in and I can like do these little moments where I, I pull the audio like louder and softer, you know, with using these little, wait a minute, mm -hmm. it wasn't bypass, volume. Yeah, you want level. Sorry, I'm just control Zing. Ah! <laughs> Things that happen when you're live. Okay. So let's right click, show volume level all right this is the one we want yeah there so is. i could add these keyframes and move my volume like from here to going a little quiet during the music and then here and then go back up for the yelp mm -hmm. now um i will admit i've got a little glitch here where i can't hear my audio but i'm glad you guys can so i can't actually hear how this sounds so you'll have to oh, tell okay. me if that's all right <laughs> something about my audio is just going to you guys for my my stream here and i apologize Yes, the music uh, dip a little does, bit? It does dip. There's a little, okay. yeah. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to show you is this keyframing. And it took me like four times to do it. But you right click um, on your sequence here, show clip keyframes, volume, level. Not bypass. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. Now, and there is a feature, that. and I, I won't be able to walk you through it necessarily. Uh, but if you have uh, tracks of uh, audio with clips or talking, usually is what it's used for. There's an auto ducking where it'll dip the music for when people are talking. <gasps> so that might be something you want to look into for with nature sounds. I'm checking. I'm taking notes on that auto ducking. <laughs> this is <laughs> I feel like I learn every time I'm with you or Paco. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to take my own notes. I get to like be hosted by people that know a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. well, that's that I just happened to uh, <laughs> happen to mod for um, Jason Levine for quite a while. So I learned a few Whoa. things cool that's awesome that's awesome so now i can go in here and um you know i can add my others i can add the the clips that i took day one of the prairie dogs you know just select and drag and pull them in so that's kind of how i put everything together and this just took a really really long time um but you get an idea of kind of how i was putting things together and i look to put things together according to how the music is feeling and how everything is feeling and um i would love to now share with you the final project the final piece that i made is Absolutely. that okay yeah yeah let's see all it. right let me um i'm gonna actually save this little thing 
Because so from out of the oven, <laughs> near pro oven. <laughs> oh, I have put that under. Okay, now this is it's the 4K version. I can put the link up in the or Cody Bear if you. It's just um, Christy. If you look at YouTube, Christy Odom Z9 um, campaign. I'm sure maybe you can find it. Maybe. Um, maybe. It, Maybe, maybe, perhaps. I All right, here. believe Cody can find anything. <laughs> She's amazing. All right, here we go. That's so cool. <laughs> I had so much fun oh, with that. <laughs> I had so much fun. It was just like that whole project was such an amazing gift. And um, yeah, so that was um, my first campaign that I got to go out and photograph on my own. And I was, I was, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. Like, I'm really proud of it. And I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk about it. I did yeah. miss a step that I wanted to mention real quick. Like the very last step after I get my full sequence together and I get my mm -hmm. transitions, I do the color correct at the end. So I didn't do any color correcting today, but we talked about that a little bit yesterday. Um, so that's when I go through and I, I adjust all the color in every single clip. Um, and I do that. And I also, you know, yesterday I showed how I, I, I hit the beats of the music with the mm -hmm. markers. Yeah. I go through and I hit the beats with the music. Um, and I, I cut the clips so that they fit all of those areas. Um, so those are things that, yeah, um, I'm glad that I was able to chat about yesterday. I add those steps in here. I know we're about time for our artist spotlight though. Yeah, so can, <laughs> if you want, we can go ahead and do that now. Um, yeah. Okay. Definitely, yeah. I can go back in. For sure. Good thing I saved it. Um, but the biggest thing is like at the very end, like uh, one of the most important things in life, the universe and everything oh. is to, can you hear me? Yeah, no, I was saying we could do the artist spotlight if you wanted to do oh, that now. That's what yeah. you wanted to do now. Okay, okay, cool. Let's do the artist spotlight now. Huh. We, have to have, we have to save some of the, the pro tips for right at the end, <laughs> just to keep people hanging on. <laughs> okay, sounds good, sounds good. All right, so are we ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. 
You want me to open you... the website? How... Yes. Let's be... Okay. Uh, yes, you're 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 guiding us through this uh, art oh, spotlight here. So, wonderful. do you know this uh, person? Personally? Yes. Or... Okay. Awesome. Why don't you yes. give us a little intro to them? And... So, my good friend Mike Meswald II. He is one of the most amazing and inspirational humans. Like he grew up with looking at storms outside his window, and he became just so infatuated with them that he used his camera as a tool to to start showing the power of of storms it's 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 great because a lot of times when i'm messaging with him i'll be like what are you doing he's like oh i'm heading <laughs> off to photograph this volcano that's erupting in iceland and i um absolutely adore him not just as a photographer but as a teacher and somebody that just helps community out mm -hmm. he is a avid lightroom and avid um user of adobe products as well so he uses the products himself to um i think there's an expand button on the top of those photos is that correct oh there we go oh maybe hmm. not i don't know what that is yeah hi right. well you guys should all check out this website it's really really cool the severe weather oh, um wow. it was really nice because i think it's just because my i have a really um let me just change my browser size i have a really large um display I'm looking at and I think it's just meant to oh, be. Oh what size at. is your display? I'm not sure, but it's big. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, this looks much better. But as you guys can see, it's just like the power of nature and, and his passion. And he's just definitely somebody to follow on Instagram and um just be amazed at uh you know the skies. Yeah, yeah just I love his stuff. So yeah, do you talk like shop with them all the time or? Yes. Uh, and when I got caught in the storm the other day, I was lucky enough to have him as a guest instructor for my mentoring group recently. And um, for sure, when I was caught in the storm the other day, I was like, I need to channel my inner mic. <laughs> I need to figure out how I can get really good photos right now. And it definitely helped because he was the one that I think I mentioned yesterday that I had a buddy that tell me that told me that storms are really, you know, a lot oh, of times yeah. beautiful from the the other side of storms and um it was it's just it's really nice because sure enough like can you, can you yeah. back up a couple i just want to look at that again yeah one more, yeah, Wait, one more. this one yes oh my gosh so That's he has amazing. this he has workshops and everything but he has this where is his um uh, his instagram i want to show you his instagram because he put a picture up like just a couple days ago that i was just like mike what in the world um uh, mike Ms. Uh, I don't know where his Instagram is. Okay. Anyways, but um, uh, it might be in his about on here. Maybe maybe it's in our contact. Maybe. Well, you guys should look at his website and um, yeah, keep an eye out. He's um, amazing, inspirational photographer. We've oh, we've oh, spoken there it is, down at the bottom. Nice. Okay. Um, oh, I think he's put his Instagram down for a little bit. Um, but anyways. Um, yeah, definitely check out his website, check out his work and um, do what you can to follow him because he's got can some you, beautiful um, stuff. Maybe go uh, click on his portfolio again. I want to see if what we can look at through some of this. OK, um, I know we looked at. Oh, yeah. Walk us through a few of these. Yeah, let's do it. Wow. Oh, man. He was going to try to tune in today. I'm not sure if he's there in the chat. If you're in the chat, Mike, say hi. Yeah, Mike, say <laughs> say hi if you're, if you're hanging out with us. He's had a lot on his plate. It's a, a, a rare time when he's actually oh, wow. at home right now. But I love his whole, yeah. Some, just, some serious range going on here. Like, it's, we're it's like landscapes, storms, crazy. concerts. And I love that his wildlife has such a beautiful sense of a place. Like I tend to get really tight to my wildlife and I just really oh, wow. admire this, this whole like. Can you back up just for a minute back to the bison? Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Isn't that beautiful? Multiple elements. Yeah. Do you know if uh, Mike does any slow motion filming? <laughs> Not to um, my knowledge. Um, I would love for him to, because I think that would be amazing to see. This this is some stunning work. Uh, I love when people can use their um, photography to just share 
what they love and, and share passion with the world. <laughs> and, um, oh, here we go. Yeah, let's look through these. Absolutely. I feel like I'm rambling when I just- No, you're like... good. We're just, uh, you know, just taking in the view. I'm, I'm kind of speechless here, just looking at some of these uh, photos. It's, it's, I mean, I would love to see his editing process because I, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Look at this. Get in He's touch a... with, with uh, Adobe Mike. <laughs> let's get some, <laughs> get some tips and tricks. He's an amazing educator, so I think he would be. Uh, I would definitely tune into that one. <laughs> wow. Wait, go back. That's a place that exists. <laughs> It looks like it's, uh, wow. I'm not even sure what I'm looking at. That's amazing. Hi. Very cool. Um, well, thanks for sharing Mike's work with us. And uh, if you want to hop back in and we can um, talk about, uh, what were you going to talk about? Color grading? or was Yeah, that just a yeah. few of the last steps or whatever. Like if there's yeah. anything specific people want me to go through, I can talk about like, because I obviously haven't finished that project yet. So I've got mm -hmm. some steps that I can go through. Sure. Um, I would I'm love to go back through like the, you know, um, the, the, the everything I do to kind of finish up a project. Absolutely. But um, is there anything, Wade, in the chat that's... Um, I don't see anything yet, but chat, if you have any last minute questions, now is the time to get it in. Uh, we've got about 20 minutes. Oh, wonderful. Roughly. Yeah. Cool stuff. All right, let me see. Uh, Cody Bear saying uh, she would love to see more about color and how you work with color. Awesome. Okay. Hang on a second. All right. Can you guys hear me? Sure can. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So now we're going to talk about, um, actually the color is my last step. So we're going to talk about music and then we're going to talk about okay. the color. And unfortunately, for some reason, I am not hearing my audio. Like I said, it's just going through um, to you guys. Um, but I can talk through the process. So it's not a complete loss if that's all right. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Uh, Premiere Pro. Are you sure you want me to mess with this? Preferences, audio. Oh, audio hardware. I'm sorry, I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> All good. Audio hardware. Hardware, okay. Oh, the output. It's trying to go through my microphone. I, I'm going to put that as my headphones. Okay. Uh, Let's see if it works. All right, let's see, because that would be really. Oh, I can hear it now. Can you guys still hear it? Yes, we can. We oh, can all hear it. Oh my yeah. gosh, thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness, right? We all make those mistakes. We're all learning, right? Absolutely. Every day. Every, every day. day. Every day. So I'm going to actually do that thing where I, I, I usually do this with my eyes closed. I know that sounds silly. But I'm going to put oh, my no. mouse over this add marker. And every time I hear a beat, I'm going to click this marker. And I'm going to try to find the rhythm of, of this song that way. So um, you could press M as a keyboard shortcut, I believe. Oh, if you yeah, to do that. I could do M. I could totally do let's, that. Let's see it. Let's see if it works first before. All right, I'll do M. I'm going to hit space bar to go. And then I'm going to hit M every time I hear that um, the beat from the song. I don't think it's working. <laughs> it is. Oh, oh, yep, there it is. We're just gonna go to there but as you see it like put these i've got to um pull the dots together so you can really see my markers i got a lot of light in my face so sometimes i'm looking at the computer wrong okay um do you guys want to be able to okay so now i'm gonna try to you know i'm gonna mute um yeah i'm gonna try to just kind of adjust these to start and stop mm -hmm. whenever 
on these markers. So it'll go from here to doom. Yeah. And I pull that up to just, yeah, this one's really close. So let's just pull that there. This one goes for way too long, so I'm just going to cut that down. Short attention span. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's a... Uh... It seems to be pretty common. I have the same issues. <laughs> I'm like, Let's I'm make it quick. Let's go. I know, right? And then when the music changes, there, that that hit right there. And then, oh, but now I need to change my keyframing where the audio went down, which is another reason why you don't want to do that step until. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You remember how I made the dip in the music? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I have to change that to over here, but I'm not going to worry about that. You're going to hear a weird dip. So yeah, I think you could I'd... grab all of that and just slide it. Can you? Because that would be amazing. I think you can. I think you can select it all, but I'll have Let's... to see if it works. Let's see. I don't want to mess up your your flow though, so <laughs> you can always come back to it. We can. Where is the keyframes? No. Oh. Yeah. There's there. the dip. So yeah, I could probably just drag it over to where the other. I wonder if I could select multiple. Key yeah, that's frames. what I, I think. I thought you maybe could, but maybe, maybe if I hit the shift. Oh, <gasps> yeah. Oh, check that out. I can pull the whole dip over. Where is my little Yelp? I need to. Yeah, the Yelp is here. Oh, buddy. Sorry. I got an elderly dog who sometimes coughs. Oh. Okay, so yeah, there's my little dip. So I'm going to hit the shift button or the shift button and select oh my gosh <gasps> how cool is that and i think i've dipped it way too much but you know i mean these are all the fine tunes you kind of go through. yeah yeah so you guys get kind of an idea with me without me going through the whole thing but i try to hit those beats as much as possible and i also listen for the drama and the music and the whimsy and i try to like match up my frame so a lot of this is like going through and you know do i have a little gap sometimes you get these weird these little gaps oh there's no gap okay and if you get a gap you just right click and do that ripple delete so you go through and you yeah just time everything out to I added a bugling sound here. I'm used to hearing that bugling sound. <laughs> so you would take Way these down. markers and make your cuts at the at a beat, is what you're saying? Exactly. Like you yeah. Yes. So I would take all the markers and make my cuts at a beat. I'm just going to delete these. There we go. OK. Um, so you go through and you put everything together and, you know, then I go, go in and do like my audio, uh, or my video transitions just here. I'm going to do my dissolve. I'm going to do a dip to black at the very beginning. And I want to do like a fade in that's a bit slow just because it's like, I don't want it to be too abrupt. I want this like music to come in. Yeah. So I think that looks good. And I do some dip to blacks throughout if I'm doing a dramatic change that maybe doesn't make sense. It's like a pause. For me, it's like a pause. If I, if I feel like I'm like pausing in a sentence or something, like I'll do a little dip to black. I don't use a lot of the other fancier transitions and oh my gosh, I don't know how Lucas did such an amazing job with like all these fancy tra like transitions, but I'm like, he's the only one that can do these swipes. And I'm like, oh my <laughs> God, they're so cool. They work like I am just totally impressed with, I mean, yeah, definitely some massive skills there with using unusual transitions, mm -hmm. not necessarily unusual, but there'd be like this wipe on the screen. And I'm like, if I do that, it'll just look silly. <laughs> right. I think it has a lot to do with the content too. Right. So like yours is very like majestic nature, you know, if you had a star wipe in the middle of it. I don't know that that would work, but if you could make it work, would that be would be yeah. epic epic all right so we go through there and now we're going to go through and start talking about that color correction so i'm going to go on this first one and i am going to go to this color tab here and um and i can adjust this color i like that these sliders are you know similar to those in lightroom 
Um, and I just kind of play with something that looks right, something that matches the other clips. You know, this one's a little bit on the warm side. That's how it was, but it's still just I usually add a little bit of contrast and I usually add a little bit of a vignette. So something along those lines, maybe for that first edit. And because I've, I'm going to just mute this music for, for, so you don't have to keep hearing it. Um, so this first clip is the same as this third clip. So I would probably right click on this and copy. And once I get an edit, I like, I can paste that here and I just want to paste the color mm -hmm. tab. So now all of a sudden this is going to match this, which is going to be great. This one I feel is a little bit dull. I mean, I shoot everything, you know, at neutral and standard. So I definitely find that I do a little more contrast, do a little more exposure and do just a little bit of edit with them. But I edit these just kind of like I would edit a photograph, to be honest. And maybe that's, you know, I'm very simple, but I feel like those three edits kind of look very, very. Yeah. It definitely you know, works they're... for sure. Yeah. Um... I was going to ask, do you think with this, uh, with the new Lightroom, um, you know, editing, color editing possibility, do you think you're going to be doing more color edits in there before yes. going into Premiere? Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> I was like, I, right before the stream, I was like, can I talk about this? Cause this is amazing and game changing, but I've never used it. <laughs> yeah. And I was I, I was given the thumbs up that I could mention it, which was pretty nice. cool because I am I, I cannot wait to introduce that into my workflow. I think it's going to be it's going to be amazing. I mean, it is amazing. Right. And technology yeah. just yeah. It gets better and better and better. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness, it's 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 crazy. All the stuff that's going on, you know, I I don't know. I never thought yeah. that I'd have a camera that could track the eye of a pika through animal right. eye tracking. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, you can kind of go in here and, you know, constantly I keep my edits like super simple. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's my style. I like, I used to work in a dark room and I kind of keep things like stuff that I could probably imitate. I'll warm this up because the first two clips were a little bit on the warm side. So I want to keep it a little consistent there. I'm going to go backwards so that I can hear the chirp again. <laughs> you guys heard the wind in there. That's why a good fade in and out would be nice, but um, here, the shadows look a little bit dark, so I pull the shadows up. It's it's great too, and that's one of the reasons why I shoot at um, I film at that ten bit color because I find that there's a lot more um, a lot more information, a lot more colors. Like mm -hmm. I'm really impressed with the amount of detail that I can get out of these files. Um, the, you know, so something make sure the whites those whites are blown out. We don't we can't have that. Can't have whites that are blown out. Did I blow out the whites? And anyways. Uh, maybe if I pull the contrast, I pulled the contrast too much. I'm like, <laughs> it's like when I'm shooting and talking. Now I feel like I'm editing and talking, <laughs> no, no you know, worries, yeah. you guys are hearing my, uh, and this one would definitely need warp stabilization for sure, for sure, which is a good last step. So I would go in here I would do the shadows. I would do this and just play with it um, a little bit. Let me see. Now, when you do warp stabilized, you can't extend the clip afterwards, so you can't like pull it. So you want to make nesting. sure you lock it, lock it down. Yeah. So yeah. that warp stabilization needs to be like one of the very last steps. But you see all that moving around. So we're gonna go ahead and just, I am gonna fix that here because it's dry. It's gonna drive me nuts. Um, so that's under video effects. It's under um, distort. And we're gonna go ahead and just because I just want to show you this. It's such yeah, a cool. Yeah, oh wait, I didn't nest, nest it, it, did yeah. I? Thank you so much. So you right click, you nest the sequence and you have to do this because it's slow motion. If you're shooting not in slow motion, you don't have to nest the sequence, um, which is kind of cool. So now I've got the nested sequence. I'm gonna drop the warp stabilize. You can see it's um, gonna do this kind of slow. Sometimes warp stabilize does take a minute. So just be patient with it. Don't be like, ah, it's frozen. Um, yeah. If you have your effects control tab open over here, you can watch the process and how long it's taking. Um, so it's at 25% now. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, sometimes it, you know, starts slow and then it'll speed up and, you know, kind of get through <laughs> the process quick. Exactly. Just, it kinda, I think it depends on uh, how much movement is happening during the frames. That's the way I've correlated it. I don't know if that's true or not, but. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, let's see. Analyzing still. 72%, it's getting yeah. close. Has this been helpful, me going through this today? Any questions, concerns, comments? Yeah, any questions, chat? Any... Uh, I mean, I've, I've found it to be uh, a lot of fun watching, <laughs> you know, your process and seeing all the, uh, 
you know, results of it. That's, you know, really cool to be showing that, you know, in the full clips and the full sequence. Uh, I've oh, had oh, so just... much fun with this. And it's like, it's scary though, because I feel so confident with photography. And now that I've started like mm -hmm. teaching more and more on video, I'm going, you know what? I feel like I'm a beginner at video, but I want to inspire people to start using it. I want to show that it's not as hard and scary and you don't have to know yeah. Premiere Pro inside and out. You can know, just know parts of it and, and be able to use that to really expand what you're doing as a visual artist, you know? Yeah, and you know, being, being intimidated by something just shouldn't let it shouldn't stop you. It should, you know, you, you there's lots of opportunity to, you know, explore programs. You're not losing anything. You know, if you have it, if you have a, you know, creative cloud subscription and you have all these programs, why not play and see what you can do with it? Exactly. Here, let's play this back real quick before we get to another question. Cause I want you guys to see what the warp stabilizer did here. See how much smoother that is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So it's much a... smoother. Uh, Laura is saying, yes, it's very helpful. Uh, we've <laughs> learned so much. I completely agree. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> is there any last minute things you want to do to this before we hop into a wrap up? No, not at Well, the only thing is, you know, the file export, like oh, export yeah, let's, your media. Let's go through some export. And um, so once you're done or a good point for your clients to look at or for you to look at or for anything like that, you know, it's really nice to, let me just move my Zoom screen. Um, you know, I can name this, I usually name it like, um, I call this like the Z9 edit one or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want this to be Facebook size. <laughs> I want this to be, I want this to match the, uh, match the um, sequence settings. Where's the... Uh, match source and you've got adaptive high bitrate which is the one I usually do if I'm doing if I'm doing a preview I can go a little bit lower but I want all the quality I can I like this h264 um, and yeah I do I, I tell it where I want the image where I want the video I'm sorry and um, I hit the export now if I want something smaller for my social I can go on here mm -hmm. and do the same thing you know with finding the Facebook full high def and I can downsize this to high def and because this was all 4k editing today um, so I can make it as small as I want if you want to optimize it for social media platforms you can do that through preset and just we did show this yesterday but I can also yeah. go in here and go to more presets and find all sorts of fun presets here that I can I can do my export as which is really really helpful but yeah doing the export I think is super important and that's um that's a wrap with this <laughs> nice. That's awesome. We're getting uh, lots of, uh, let's see, Jackie says, very inspiring. Uh, Jenny says this has been very inspirational. Uh, I absolutely agree with that. Do you want us to give us a little recap of what we did over both days? For sure. Let me just close out of Premiere. Um, sure, I'll save this. All right. So yesterday, oh, there's Mike's images. Those are so cool. I love this work. Um, <laughs> yesterday, we talked about adding video in small formats to your website, to your Instagram, to your Facebook, your TikTok, and ways to enhance yourself as a visual artist. I think that um, websites and even news stories are moving towards using uh, moving stills. So you don't have to think about video as doing these full video pieces, but just these short pieces of visual art that you can use all over the place. So yesterday yeah. we talked all about that. And today we talked more about putting together one big long project. And I use the example of my Nikon Z9 campaign to, to show you guys my workflow and working with a commercial client and how I um, put together a piece that yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I got to yeah. tour all around the U.S. and share it and talk about yeah. it. Like, it was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward. What what do you have? Do you have anything planned next that you can talk about? Like, oh, my goodness. So I'm going back to Bolivia to work with bears and bees. I am working with a group that's going into the Amazon and talking with rural communities about how to harvest native bees. Um, so I'm doing a photo that's video amazing. project there. I'm working with um, Another project with toads. Yesterday I had to get off, like I had to leave really quickly because of toads. <laughs> yeah, I had to photo, I was photographing tadpoles last night. Oh, and nice. I will say that like tadpoles may be one of the hardest subjects yet. Like the element of water and movement and the tiny, tiny, tiny size. I was, I mean, I spent two hours and I got one photo that I liked. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like, it was so crazy. It was so much fun though. I brought static lights. I brought <laughs> underwater lights. I, I went crazy yesterday, but I'm, 
you know, there's there's a fungus that's um, un unfortunately killing off these mountain toads, and I, I'm I'm working with a group that um, is working to save the diminishing numbers of these mm. these toads, and so they have created um, 800 tadpoles that they're going to release. Oh wow! Into the mountain. Is, is that something you're going to do some slow motion video with? Uh... I'm only doing that as a photo project, but I'm turning oh, okay. the pika project. I'm going to do the pika project that I did, the story um, that I worked on for for Nat Geo uh, that went online on mm -hmm. the pika patrol. I'm going to try to do a, a, a video. So I'm going to try to do like more of a, um, a, a film that talks about what they're doing to save the pikas because nice. pikas, so, so there's more pika videos coming there's up there's gonna so be a have, lot of yes. pika videos speaking I'm of like to that for sure. you guys should follow me on instagram yes. i would love to like i would i don't know i'd love to see your work i would love for you know more people to keep up with the pika footage and stuff like that and you know i try to share messages of conservation and Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I use my visual art to hopefully get people to love and appreciate the, the natural world. And if any of you guys are interested too, I do run workshops, like go to my website, christyodom.com and you can subscribe to my newsletter and yeah, I, I, I'd love for, I don't well, know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Everybody go follow Christy. Um, uh, that is going to do it for today. Uh, Adobe live will be back tomorrow at 8 AM Pacific time for a new episode of the Adobe fonts show. Uh, it's uh, t tune in with Ben and Ari on Adobe Live as they dive into font pairing. Uh, but yeah, Christy, thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. I can't get the squeak out of my head, uh, but that's a good thing. Um, but thanks. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity. This has been such a gift. I appreciate you all. It really has. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you guys soon. <laughs>